These researchers are trying to solve a puzzle. It's going to be up on the side of the hill, Sean. I told you. My coyote den. They are looking for a missing pronghorn antelope. Pretty close now. There it is. All that's left of this particular animal is a radio tracking collar. Well, I think it's uh, probably predation. Because we don't have any body on this collar, we can't determine anything other than it's, it's gone. But this much is known. Pronghorn antelope are fading away, suddenly in a place they were once abundant. There's nothing more unique to West Texas than the pronghorn antelope. Until four or five years ago, they were just part of the landscape. We've just seen a, a, a huge decline. When we lose the pronghorn, we lose a little bit of us. And we've got to figure it out here pretty quick before it's too late. Above the fields of the Texas Panhandle, a helicopter hauls some unusual cargo. These pronghorn are being transported from far north Texas to supplement populations in West Texas. You used to be able to drive from Ballantyne to Marfa and maybe see two or three hundred of them just from the highway. And now you're lucky if you see one. To help the dwindling herds around Marfa, Texas Parks and Wildlife is transporting some 200 pronghorn from the northern panhandle. <laughs> Pronghorn are the fastest land mammals in North America, so catching them is not easy. After a nine hour drive, the pronghorn take their first steps into their new home. I'm just, hang on, I just want to check on this one here. Billy, you want to take a look in? Biologists will monitor the new arrivals and study their fawns born in the spring. We're hopeful that they will prosper and do well. The best feeling is going to be when they start making babies and when these populations come back to what they used to be. The population began to crash in 2008. Five dead here, four dead there. And we blamed a lot of that on the drought, but we began to get rains and watch the antelope continue to decline, and then we knew we had a problem. To unravel the mystery, Professor Lewis Harbison and his wildlife management students began to investigate causes of mortality. We started sampling some of the pronghorn, and one of the first clues that we found from those necropsies was the homuncus. This common pronghorn parasite was being found in alarming numbers. If you have thousands of these worms in your stomach, then obviously you, you become anemic, you're weakened, uh, you're not gonna evade uh, predators and cold spells and heat spells like, like you would if, if you were a more healthy animal. The stomach worms may be just one prong of the pronghorn problem, but initial findings make way for further study. Are you picking up this one right here? Is that one from over here? Or? How many were predator related? So far? Yeah. Five, we contributed to some type of predation. Right, the picture you showed me. By summer, Marfa has not been very welcoming to those relocated pronghorn. There's not a lot out there for pronghorn to eat, so it's just pretty rough on them right now. It's going down on the record as one of the worst droughts that we've experienced. And drought has not been the only challenge. We've had several huge fires in the Trans-Pecos region. A lot of livestock have been lost, a lot of fences have been lost, hundreds of thousands of acres. But in the end, if there is a silver lining, it is that those rangelands actually will come back in healthier condition if and when we ever get rainfall. What little rain has fallen has heightened another threat. Runoff has greened up the roadsides, making these perilous places all too tempting to wildlife. Within the last few weeks, we've had several vehicle collisions. And there may be other connections to the drought. It's pretty dry. They don't have a lot to choose from. You know, they're, they're going all day long. Without enough weeds and forbs, poor nutrition could be a piece of the puzzle. 
they have to expend a lot of energy to come find one piece to do any good. And they could be filling up on some sort of vegetation, but they're not really getting what they need to survive. Pronghorn survival here ultimately depends on the health of their offspring. So fawn mortality is the focus of graduate student James Weaver's research. We've been experiencing some extremely low fawn crops throughout the region. And so I'm out here trying to figure out why. It's really good if you can spot a doe right before dark and see the fawn up and watch it till it beds down. Finding the fawn is the hard thing. That's the only fawn that's still around, so I think that they just have fawned and perished. Yeah. The researchers watch the herd until sundown in hopes they can locate fawns after dark. Armed with spotlights, they scan for eyes on the horizon. You see something? Our population is pretty sparse, so we spend a lot of time just searching. Yeah, those big eyes there. Just keep going like this, and we'll go right back down. Sometimes we come across them pretty quick. Other nights we've spent several hours out here not caught a thing. There he is. Shh. Oh. The fawns may be young, but they're already fast. Got him. Got him. Oh. How did we miss it? These are very labor intensive research projects. Ah, uh, he won this battle. The crew gives up the chase for the first fawn, but for the rest of the night, the captures go smoothly. Oh. Good catch, Jack. Nice oh. snag, dude. That worked. It did work. Oh. We got one. Oh. That's a big one, too. Oh. OK, OK, baby, OK. The main thing is the weight. The weight's really a, a strong correlation to survival. Nope, nope, nope. So the heavier the animals are at birth, the more likely they are to survive. Okay. We measure them from the nose to the tail head. Seven. Look at new hoof growth. Damn present. Yes. We put ear tags in the animal, and then we also collar it. We had some success. It was a good night. We've had some really hard nights so far. This, this was a pretty good night. The fawn seems dazed at first. But as the crew packs up, it is off and running again. Hopefully, onto a long life as an adult pronghorn. You did good, except that one catch and release. That was <laughs> well, it's going to be early now. We're going to be home by 3. What am I going to do till 5 in the morning? <laughs> We've got a great team working on this, so uh, I'm very hopeful that we'll find answers. As research into the plight of the pronghorn builds, so does support for this West Texas icon. It keeps you going to know that you're helping the species out. It's definitely a joint effort. In the midst of a drought, optimism's hard to embrace, but I think we have the right team together. Everyone wants to know what's going on with the pronghorn, and so I know with that kind of support from the community, we can turn this around.